Hello and welcome back to the OSPF for CCNP and Beyond course. I'm excited to announce that I have a new tool to use in these videos and I hope that first of all I'll get better at using it and that it will provide some value to this and also that you will like and subscribe if you haven't already for more trainings. Alright, that's enough of that. Let's get on to the learning. In the last video, we covered what the designated router and the backup designated router are and why we need them. In this video, we're going to cover how a router becomes a DR or a BDR, and we're going to discuss a timer that was mentioned but not fully explained, the wait timer. If you haven't seen the other videos or you just need a review, there's a link in the description to a playlist that has all the videos of the course, so make sure you check that out. All right, let's begin. The DR and the BDR are elected via an election process that occurs right at the end of the two-way state just before the X start and exchange phases begin. Remember that the two-way phase means we have noticed our own router ID and the hello packet from our neighbors, and this lets us know that we have two-way communication with the neighbors. The hello packet also includes the DR and the BDR for the segment. If this portion of the hello packet is not empty, and therefore does not contain a value 0000, the new router assumes the currently elected DR and BDR are in fact the elected designated router and backup designated routers. So basically what I'm saying is if a router receives a hello packet and it has values in the DR and BDR field, that local router is going to update its own hello packets to reflect who the currently elected routers are. If the value in the DR and BDR field of the hello packet is blank or empty, that router is going to attempt to elect itself as the DR or the BDR. Let's take a break from the lecture and look at this in a lab environment. Okay, so what we have here is the topology on the left where all the routers are on the same segment, and I've already configured OSPF on each router, but all of the interfaces are shut down. And what I'm going to do is turn on adjacency debugging on router 4. We've got a packet capture running on router 400 running in the background that we can use to examine later. And then I'm going to use CRT to send commands to all sessions and no shut all of these interfaces at the same time. So let's turn on debugging first and you do that with the following command. So that's debug IP OSPF ADJ, which is, I guess, short for adjacency. So we'll turn that on. And now I'm going to go ahead and no shut these interfaces. Now we should see some output start here shortly. We have two-way communication. So if we show the neighbors, we can see we're in the two-way state. Now, the reason we don't see any more output is because we're in that wait phase. I'm going to explain the wait timer in more detail later, so I won't get into that for now. And instead, we'll just fast forward through this waiting process until the rest of the output starts to come. So as you can see, we're currently in the two-way state, and we're waiting for the DR and the BDR election process to start. And there we go. The output's flying, and we have full adjacencies. So if I do show IP OSPF neighbors, we can see we're full. So I'm going to turn debugging off. I'm going to stop this capture so we can look back through it later. And let's scroll back up here. So what we see is that, yes, we have reached the two-way communication with each of the neighbors. We went through that waiting period, which I'm going to explain in a few minutes. And then at the end of the waiting period, we see that the DR and BDR election starts to take place. So 4.4.4 was elected as the BDR, and then the DR, and then the BDR was elected. Once this election process is finished, you see we have the database description packets going back and forth. We have link state requests, link state updates, and eventually we end at the full adjacency. So going back to what I was mentioning about the hello packets is if we open this hello packet, we can see that this is what it looks like when you have empty values in the DR and the BDR field. So if you look right here, right here, this is what it looks like when it is blank. Next, you can see that we eventually reach the two-way state because we have the presence of the neighbors and the router IDs. This is during the waiting period. Then we have the descriptions going back and forth. And you can see in these packets, these hello packets down the line, that we now have presence of the DR and the BDR. So that's a brief look into the adjacency process. And I just wanted to illustrate where, uh, at what in between what phases that that takes place. Let's hop back into the presentation, go over a few more bits of the theory, and then we'll come back in the lab, 
kind of experiment, break things, and look at some more uh, packets, so on and so forth. Welcome back to the presentation. The next thing we're going to talk about is the OSPF interface priority. So OSPF routers have an interface priority. And the default priority for that is going to be 1. But the priority can range from 0 to 255. And any router with a priority from 1 to 255 will attempt to become the DR or BDR for the segment. If the priority is 0, the router does not participate in the election process and it's never going to become the DR or the BDR. Routers include this priority in the hello packet. And if a router identifies itself as having a higher priority, thereby being more preferable, it will elect itself as the DR or BDR, but only if there is not a current DR or BDR for the segment. So there's no preemption in this election process. What we're saying is the highest priority wins, but depending on when the routers come online, a router with the highest priority may not necessarily be the DR, and the second most highest priority may not necessarily be the BDR. Once a DR and BDR are elected, they stay in their role until the OSPF process is restarted or the DR or BDR fails. If a router receives a hello with a more favorable priority, so a higher priority from a neighbor during the election process, it will update its own hello packets to reflect that router with the higher priority as the DR or the BDR. Now the default priority is one and the tiebreaker is gonna be the router ID. So the highest priority wins. If they're all the same, the highest router ID wins. We'll talk about that more in the next slide, but note that modifying the router ID for DR or BDR placement is not a good practice. The better option would be to manually configure the priority for DR placement based on your requirements. Again, as we just mentioned, if the OSPF priorities are the same, the highest router ID will win the election. Remember that the router ID is chosen in one of three ways. You can either manually configure it under the OSPF process using the router ID command, or the OSPF process is going to choose the highest active loopback interface that's on the router. If there's no highest active loopback interface, it'll choose the highest active IP address. The best practice would typically be to manually configure the router ID. And as previously mentioned, the DR and the BDR roles cannot be preempted. The DR or the BDR must fail, or you must restart the OSPF process for those changes to take effect. So if router 1 and router 2 were online, and they were the DR and the BDR respectively, let's say you brought router 3 online with a higher priority of 255 and the highest router ID. That router 3 would not become the DR or the BDR until one of the other routers fails. But if the DR fails, the current BDR will promote itself to DR, and then router 3 in this case would become the BDR, and this process continues. But if you restarted the OSPF process on all the routers, then router 3 would elect itself as the DR. Now that may have been confusing because DR, BDR, BR, DR, BR, DR, and all of that. But what I suggest you do is turn this up in your own lab, start modifying priorities, router IDs, and just experiment and look at the results. Now we'll do that here in a few seconds in my lab, but as always, I just suggest that you turn it up on your own and that's gonna be the best way to learn. Something I wanted to mention here is that the CCMP Encore book states on page 184 that once all the routers agree on the DR for the segment, then the BDR is elected. But again, RFC 2328 for OSPF v2 slightly disagrees. RFC 2328 explains the election algorithm in detail in section 9.4 of the RFC, and the BDR is actually elected first. We'll go back and look at the debug adjacency output, and we're going to see that reflected. That's actually initially what made me look further into this, because the book said one thing, but the debug output said another. So this is another example of why labbing is very important and the RFC is always king. That's a very beautiful crown there. Let's take a quick look at the RFC and that output and I just want to show you some of the relevant sections. So again, looking at this uh, debug output, we do see in fact that at first router 4 is elected as the BDR. Then it's promoted itself to DR and we see router three replace the BDR. So that's what the RFC says should happen, and that's what happened. And if we look here at the RFC, section 9.4, you can look further into this if you want, and I suggest that you do. But if we see step two here, 
it states that the second step is calculate the new backup designated router for the network as follows. The first step is note the current values. As I said, it's going to monitor those hello packets and look for the presence of a router in the DR and BDR field. And if there's nothing there, it's going to calculate the backup designated router first. Now, further in this section, we scroll down here to the bottom. This paragraph right here gives us a little bit more information. It basically says the reason behind the algorithm complexity is the, the desire for the orderly transition. And long story short, it says no new backup designated router can be chosen until the old backup accepts its new designated router responsibilities. So again, if you're really trying to go deep into OSPF, RFC is going to be where you're, where you're going to end up wanting to go. So let's jump back into the presentation. We'll go over a little bit more of the theory and then we'll get in the lab again and then we'll wrap up the video. Welcome back to the presentation and now we'll discuss the wait timer. So when an OSPF router comes online, we know that it moves through various phases and the interfaces can be in various states. An OSPF router is going to wait for a period of time, which is the wait timer, before electing the DR or the BDR. The wait time is equal to the dead timer by default, which is 40 seconds by default on broadcast networks, which will explain broadcast and network types in a future video. While an interface is in the waiting state, it monitors the hello packets it receives, checking for the presence of the DR or the BDR. The purpose of this is to prevent unnecessary changes in the DR and the BDR. If you want to know more about this and why, read section 9.1 of RFC 2328. Let's take a look at this behavior in the lab before we close out this video. So here we have the same lab from earlier, but what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to bring up router 1 and router 2 first. I'm going to let the wait timer expire and then we'll bring on router 3 and router 4 and we'll take a look at those results. So I'll go ahead and get that done. I'll fast forward through that and then we'll examine. So again, we've reached two-way state. We're waiting for that wait timer to expire and then we're going to see the DR and BDR election take place. And as you can see from this output, it's less time now, but we have about 11 seconds to go until the full adjacency should come up. So by the time I finish talking, we should see the full adjacency and there it is. Okay, so now that router 2 and router 1 are online, if the priorities are the same, who do you think is going to become the designated router? If you answered router 2, you would be cor correct. And we see here from this output that we are the DR. We can assume that because we have a full adjacency with router 1 who is the backup designated router. Now, what's going to happen when I bring router 3 and 4 online? Let's do that. Now, we're actually not going to see such a long wait time for this because as we enter the waiting state on routers 3 and router 4, we're going to detect that we already have a DR and a BDR for the segment. And as you can see, the full adjacency comes up much quicker. Now, because all of the priorities are the same, and even though router 4 and router 3 have higher router IDs, again, the process is not preemptive. So if we show the neighbors on router four, we're going to see that in fact, router two is the DR and router one is the, is the BDR. Even though we have a, a higher router ID and therefore should win, we don't because there's no preemption. But what's going to happen if I take down router two? Think about that for a second. If you answered that router one is going to promote itself to DR and router four is going to become BDR, you would be correct and you understand this process. So let's do that and just go ahead and take a look at the results. So I just took router two down and something worth mentioning while we have some time here is if we show the neighbors, we still have a neighborship with router two, even though I've shut him down. And the reason for that is because of the dead time. We're going to need to let that dead time expire before we drop that neighborship on all of the other routers. And he's gone. There he goes and you see the syslog dead time expired. Now we see that we have full adjacencies coming up because router 4, if we show the neighbors, we're going to find that we now have full adjacencies with everybody and we are the BDR. As you can see, router 1 is the DR for the segment. We have a full adjacency with router 3 who is a DR other and therefore we can assume that we are the BDR. Looking at the output of show IP OSPF interface, we can see that for Ethernet 0, the designated router is router 1 and the backup designated router is router 4, who we can tell is us because we have OSPF with the process ID 1 and the router ID of 4.4.4.4. So again, the election process is not preemptive. Depending on when routers come online and the wait time and, and things like that, you may see some unexpected or undesired results. 
So it's important to understand this process and how it works in your network and your design because you may want one router to be the DR and for whatever reason it may not. And therefore you can modify whatever you need to modify to get the results you need. One thing we're not going to look at in this video that I suggest you look at is changing the priority for an interface. So if I were to go to router 4's interface E00, you can enter the command IP OSPF priority. And as you can see, the value is from 0 to 255. If I was to enter 0, restart all of the OSPF everywhere, router 4, even though it had the highest router ID, would not become the DR because routers with priority of 0 do not participate in the election. Again, I've said it a hundred times already and I'll say it again, make sure you turn up in your lab and that's gonna be the best way for you to learn. Let's jump back into the presentation. We'll close out with some final thoughts and then I'll mention what we're gonna cover in the next videos. So in conclusion, we learned that OSPF routers participate in a DR or a BDR election. The highest priority will win the election with the highest router ID being the tiebreaker for that election if all priorities are the same. OSPF routers will wait for a period of time, which is the wait timer, before electing a DR or a BDR. Even though the router ID is the tiebreaker for the DR election, it is not good practice to rely on this for DR placement. Instead, you should use the priority command to manually configure the priority. And finally, we learned that the election process is not preemptive. So depending on what time a router comes online, you may or may not see the router with the highest priority or the router ID being the DR or the BDR. Understanding this process will help you understand the results that you're getting in your network and you will be able to select the DR and the BDR as you need. In the next video, we'll revisit OSPF area types and router types. We'll talk about the OSPF two level hierarchy and review router types such as backbone routers, internal routers, area border routers, autonomous system boundary routers, and so on. The video following that will start to cover LSA types. So we're really getting into the meat and potatoes of OSPF finally. If you haven't already, consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. I plan to do more trainings, labs, tips, and things like that, so I hope you're enjoying the content. I've got my little tablet to write on the screen now, so hopefully I learned to use that and create some value with it. And if you've been with me from the beginning, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I encourage you to put your thoughts in the comments section below to let me know how I can improve or what you think so far. As always, I hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.